This video is a production of the College of Arts and Sciences at Eastern Kentucky University and has been made possible through an EPSCoR grant from the National Science Foundation. Stuart Udall, who was a, a politician during the years of uh, President Johnson and Kennedy, um, wrote the foreword to Harry Caudill's book, Night Comes to the Cumberland. And in that foreword, he, he wrote, in the highest sense, conservation of the land is the conservation of human life. The two have always been and always will be inseparable. And I think that really captures exactly why we need to preserve biodiversity. Not just for the aesthetics, not because it's our responsibility, because we've been the ones primarily impacting other organisms, but because conservation of, of other organisms is the conservation of humans. My name is Dr. Steven Richter, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biological Sciences and the associate director for research in the EKU Division of Natural Areas. My responsibility is, as the associate director for research in natural areas is to uh, increase use of our natural areas for research and uh, facilitate research by applying for grants, working with others to apply for grants, providing laboratory space, field, field equipment and supplies, and uh, student research grants. Yeah, there are lots of amphibians that, that breed in wetlands and their larvae develop in wetlands. So without them, uh, that life cycle couldn't exist and the species couldn't exist. Um, there are certain species of birds and insects um, that, that require wetlands. And then others that benefit from them, like wildlife. Um, any organism that requires water that lives on the land benefits by the presence of wetlands. So wetlands are uh, habitats that aren't land or water. They're kind of an intermediary. They're, some of the year they might be dry, some of the year they might be completely full of water. Typically they're found between land and rivers and streams, and they act as uh, sponges to absorb and hold water. They prevent storm surge, so they prevent flooding from happening. Um, and they provide habitat for organisms that require that some, some part terrestrial, some part aquatic uh, life cycle. My primary research interest is understanding how organisms are distributed across landscapes, both naturally and as uh, impacted by humans. And so our, our natural areas provide areas that aren't impacted by humans. This is the lake at Maywood's Environmental and Ecological Laboratory and um, it's one of our three natural areas. It's about 1,700 acres of secondary okay. growth forest. Can I walk across? Good, okay. Obviously, as, as humans use natural resources, other, other organisms need those resources as well, and so when we harvest timber or extract coal, that impacts non-human organisms. So my research is focused on understanding how other organisms are impacted and the ultimate goal is to understand how we can extract resources in a way that has the least impact possible on non-human organisms. Here, I got a carbon amphibian in this one. Because Kentucky has lost over 80% of its wetlands, and there are species of plants and animals and other organisms that rely on wetlands, that require wetland habitat um, for their life cycle, um, there's a great conservation need in the state. And so we've worked with the Environmental Protection Agency and the Kentucky Division of Water to develop a, a method of assessing wetland quality so that when wetlands are impacted, they can be replaced. So one of the obstacles to, to this type of research is finding the organisms. And so what we use is, is uh, active and passive trapping. We set minnow traps in the wetlands and use dip nets to go out and sample for amphibians. But even if you're there at the right time of year in the right place, some species are really hard to detect. So in this, in this one dip net sweep, we caught um, an eastern newt adult. In conservation biology, there are common threads, but really conservation operates at a smaller scale. And so we need to understand processes specific to eastern Kentucky in some cases. And so by understanding what's going on here and how that affects amphibians, relates to the larger body of knowledge uh, to feed into those common threads, but it allows us to do more specific on the ground work here.